a stolen handgun, a bloody handprint, and a waterproof camera containing crucial evidence, calling the scene horrific is only the beginning. Travis Alexander and Jody Arias began a long-distance romance after meeting during a conference trip to Las Vegas in September 2006, per ABC News. By February 2007, they were pretty much inseparable, but not everyone was on board with the relationship. As one of Alexander's friends explained on 2020, I started seeing things that were just disturbing. I said, Travis, I'm afraid we're going to find you chopped up in her freezer. From very early on, she was completely obsessed with him. From the very beginning, Arius readily aligned herself with Alexander's Mormon faith, which was something he took very seriously. However, the couple's physical relationship allegedly started to cause problems for Alexander as premarital sex is strictly prohibited in the Mormon religion. As a result, Alexander reportedly experienced guilt over the relationship and decided to break up with Arius. When Alexander started dating other women, Arius reportedly started exhibiting some dangerous behavior. According to Alexander's friends, Arius allegedly slashed his tires, hacked into his social media accounts, harassed girls he was seeing, and even broke into his house. Despite all of this, they would still occasionally meet up and have sex. Alexander's friends were unable to wrap their heads around why he went on seeing her. Then one day, he reportedly remarked to a friend. And he said, you know, don't be surprised if, I, if you find me dead one day. As it turned out, Alexander's ominous warning was more prophetic than he realized. Having not heard back from Alexander while planning a trip to Cancun, a few of his friends stopped by his home to check in. Inside, they found a nightmare. Alexander was curled up, collapsed in the shower, and covered in blood. As reported by HuffPost, the 30-year-old had been stabbed a total of 27 times, shot once in the head, and his throat had been slit. Jody Arias immediately became a suspect. Those who knew Alexander were well aware of the couple's toxic dynamic. One of his friends told police that Arias was a stalker and suggested that she was likely involved in the homicide. The forensics team subsequently discovered a waterproof digital camera, long brown hairs, and a bloody handprint on the wall of Alexander's home, which all pointed to Arias. According to ABC News, Arias decided to contact the police herself after purportedly hearing about her ex-boyfriend's murder. Upon questioning, she insisted that she hadn't seen him in more than two months. However, investigators quickly debunked that claim after they found photos of Arias and Alexander together on June 4, 2008, the day of his death. Additionally, the bloody handprint on the wall contained remnants of both Alexander's and Arias' blood. Police later found out that a 25 caliber handgun had been stolen from Arias' grandparents' house shortly before Alexander was killed. After confessing to being in the house the day of the murder, Arias asserted that she and Alexander had been descended upon by two masked intruders while in bed together. According to her, they killed Alexander and threatened to murder her family if she ever unveiled the truth to the police or anyone else, per ABC News. However, there was no evidence to back up Arias' version of events, and she was ultimately charged with first-degree murder. The trial lasted for quite some time, and Arias was behind bars for several years before she was finally convicted, per ABC News. As part of her defense campaign, she claimed that Alexander had been verbally and physically abusive to her throughout their entire courtship. While Arias stated that she killed her ex in self-defense, no tangible evidence was ever produced to support this claim. I was in the bathroom. I remember dropping the knife. In 2015, Arias was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. She narrowly avoided the death penalty after the jury failed to come to an agreement on the matter. Following the trial, she said, I was really hoping the jury would see things for what they are. I didn't expect to walk away. I knew that was a possibility, a slim chance, in a parallel universe somewhere, but certainly not first degree. If you or someone you know is dealing with domestic abuse, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also find more information, resources, and support at their website.